Hey guys, Montel here, and thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of Free Thinking with Montel. And we're close to the end of 2020. I know everybody would love to have 2020 behind them, including me and everybody else that I know. And today, you know, today is the 29th of December when we are recording this podcast. So this will be one of my last ones of the year. And um, I'm happy to have as this guest today, a guest that's really turned this last year and the year before that into quite a wonderful thing. And what do I mean by that? You know, um, let me take you on a little journey. I've spoken about it several times here on Free Thinking with Watto, you know, about my diagnosis with MS. And uh, I had a big meeting this morning about MS. And, you know, I've been thinking about it quite a bit. And I remember when I was first diagnosed, I literally spiraled almost into it, just a ridiculous state of depression because you know, I was diagnosed because uh, I went to a doctor in the middle of what was an episode back then. And, you know, my episode was um, dominated by uh, a symptom that has become one of my most pervasive symptoms, and that's been neuropathic pain. And there seemed to be no end to that pain. And, you know, I uh, struggled for the first couple of years trying to find some you know, I don't know, sense of hope, some sense of, of tomorrow. And, you know, my journey, I've talked about quite often, you know, I went down a path with opioids for a while. And then I finally found cannabis that literally helped to turn me around and helped to put me in the right direction. And then I started focusing on the things that I could do to make changes in my life and in my lifestyle that would help impact some of my symptoms. And lo and behold, they did. And put me on a journey that I think has been, you know, what I've maintained for now almost 19 to 20 years. Um, and that's been one that's been filled with more positive thought than, you know, uh, the negative thought. And, you know, there's that crazy old saying about a glass being half full or half empty. I've lived really with my glass as full as much as I could and as much as I will be able to for the rest of my life. And I'm going to continue to do that. And, you know, that's kind of the journey that I think my guest was on today when she first got diagnosed. You know, I think it was a, a journey that, you know, like so many of us, oh, woe was me. But then she figured out something that literally helped to turn her around, helped to make her start focusing on the positive rather than the negative. And I guess today as a mixed media artist who works with ink, oil, and thread, she's the founder of the internationally recognized social art project called Colors of MS where she takes MRI brain scans with MS patients and turns them into absolutely incredibly beautiful works of art, transforming something that was often a sign of bad news, a brain scan showing the presence of MS, into something truly amazing. She was diagnosed with MS herself back in 2017 and turned to art as a way of healing. Her painting, her own diagnostic MRI, changed the clinical black and black and white to vibrant color, and the passion project was born. Lizzie Joy Holcomb, thanks so much for being a guest on Free Thinking with Montel today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to speak with you. Absolutely, no, an honor to speak with you too. And and let's let's go back. Let's talk a little bit about your diagnosis and and that early journey. What what happened when you got diagnosed? Well, first of all, what sent you to a doctor to begin with? And a lot of people like to hear these stories because there are people at home that are wondering right now themselves: Should I go see a doctor? And sometimes when they hear just a little teeny piece of one of our stories. They go, hmm, a doctor had said that to me, but I didn't think they were right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Absolutely. And I, I think that that was the, almost the harder part of having MS was the, the not knowing. And for me, that was a long journey. That was about a decade before I had a diagnosis. And so I remember very early symptoms clear back to high school, which is quite a while now. Um, of being able to just fall over when I'm just standing still. So a lot of balance issues, but we kind of attributed it to me being klutzy in those years. You know, I wasn't an athletic kid. We kind of joked, oh, this is Lindsay's superpower. She can fall over when she's doing nothing. <laughs> so um, I kind of ignored that for a long time and didn't, 
I, I always attributed muscle weakness that I had to also just not being a particularly athletic person. Um, and it, it took me about 10 years to, again, get to that diagnosis. And what really got me beating down the doctor's doors, because I heard any number of maybes that it might be a lot of maybes and a lot of, you know, let's check back in three months, let's check back in six months, let's check back in a year. And, you know, that becomes really difficult to navigate, especially after 10 years, it, you kind of lose hope a little bit. Um, and what happened with me is I was, you know, reading my little girl's a bedtime story one day, and this was during a flare, which is what I now understand to be a flare. Um, and I'm reading them this story and I'm reading the words, but they're not coming out of my mouth. Right. And I finally was just like, this is, this is frightening. I don't know what's happening right now. I feel like I'm developing some sort of almost cognitive disability as I'm, as I'm watching myself read this story. And that's what really got me back into the doctor to say, I need to, I need to just keep getting tests until they find it out. Well, I want to make sure I say this to those who are listening, that you know, your journey is not that uncommon. No. You know, I should back up and tell you that I was misdiagnosed for almost 20 years, um, you know, where doctors were just uh, uh, too quick to say, oh, it couldn't be MS. Oh, it couldn't be MS. Where it really was MS. My first bout was probably back in 1980 when I graduated from the Naval Academy. And I had some really little minor, bizarre little hiccups for a couple of years before that, now that I look back in time, but from 1980 to 2000, you know, I went in and out of doctor's offices and, you know, would get this, no, it can't be MS, it's something else, it's gotta be something, it's, it's all the weightlifting you're doing, it's all this you're doing, it's all that you're doing, but no one would ever really actually say MS until I went through, you uh, uh, called it a, uh, what did you call it? Um, about, no, not about. Um, a flare, left flare yeah. up. Just so people understand that, you know, remitting or lapsing MS, which means that it comes and goes, is characterized by things that doctors will call either flares, episodes, bouts, exacerbations. They use multiple different terms for it, but that just means that there's a period of time when you are going through a neurological episode that's unexplainable. And then doctors really will then go backwards from that neurological episode to try to determine a diagnosis. So finally, you went to a doctor. I assume that they decided to do an MRI on you, right? Yeah, I actually had had um, an MRI. I think it was three, four years prior that didn't show anything and or they weren't looking for it. I'm not sure what the what the deal was, but mine or the MRI machine that they use, they didn't use contrast and they didn't do it the right way. So therefore it didn't show up. You, know, you never know. You're right. I think that that appointment was more to placate me that we were doing a test, um, you know, and it was just something that I had always pushed back, you know, during that 10 years, I had two children. Um, so I had stages of pregnancy and, um, postnatal symptoms and things like that, uh, that you just, I was always pushing back as, okay, I'm really tired. Okay. I'm, you know, I, I work a very stressful job. I'm working 80 hours a week. That's what it is. Um, and so and I, I never had a quiet moment to sit with my symptoms. Just to jump in again, there it's just for those people who are tuning in and they're watching, you know, a lot of ladies, and I'm not no sure what the percentage is, there are some women who find that, you know, where they were maybe, you know, thinking there's something wrong with something wrong with me, and then all of a sudden they become pregnant. And early on, especially younger women, their symptoms seem to abate. They go away during pregnancy. And then after pregnancy, during postpartum, they kind of come back. Sometimes they come back more virulently. Sometimes they come back less virulently. And sometimes they go away completely. And then you had another pregnancy that probably push the symptoms aside again. And then after that second pregnancy, the symptoms could have come back. So I want to make sure that people who are tuning in understand that MS is not an illness that one size fits all. And it is also not an illness that, you know, any one person can say, oh, I had exactly that. I think one of the things that's so bizarre about this disease is the fact that 
you know, that's why so many of us call it my MS, because each one of us has an experience of symptoms and, and things that go along with this disease that are really unique to themselves. And so in your case, again, I want a lot of ladies out there who understand that, you know, this is not that uncommon to go through a pregnancy and then the symptoms that you were worried about that were neurological symptoms seem to go away. And then all of a sudden after you have the baby, they come back. But then they go away again as soon as you get pregnant. So therefore, you go to see the doctor and they kind of say, well, it's all in your head or it's, you know, it's just something that you're not used to. So, uh, but go ahead. I'm sorry. So that you had the MRI this, 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 and did the MRI come back the second time and show something? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And it was also paired with a spinal tap, which I know I've heard is vital sometimes to diagnosing MS, but sometimes is not. Um, in my case, that was what finally got the diagnosis was an MRI and a spinal tap. And I, I, you don't have to say which one, but did you start medication immediately? I did, I did, yes. I started um, on Tecfidera. And I, you know, I'm three years into my journey since being diagnosed. And I can't say that I've found the perfect thing yet. I'm still searching for that, that um, prescription that will help my, uh, mitigate my symptoms best. But, yeah, you know, it's very interesting. Again, I want to make sure that for those who are tuned in, you know, again, MS is such a strange neurological disorder. Mm -hmm. Because again, not one size fits all. There are right now probably closer to 20 different medications out there that give some people benefits, some people none. Some people are uh, actually go through very serious episodes or bouts and acts of exacerbations and then remain medication free and seem to get better. I've had, you know, the fortune to be able to talk to some of the leading scientists and <clears throat> doctors, excuse me, in this space and know that though we are getting closer and closer and closer, I think to some medications that will help individuals, they're still at quite a loss uh, to determine exactly which one may work best for the individual. So, you know, um, your journey again is not that unusual. You started on one medication, you probably end up going to another medication and you probably end up going to another one until you find that, that one that fits you. But I know that you, when did you decide to turn to art or turn, when did this whole idea come up? I think it was very early on. It was pretty close to after I was diagnosed because I remember going on kind of a winter break a bit from work and that gave me a quiet moment. And I was finally sitting with this answer that I had been looking for. And I'm one of um, I find it about 50 50 with people that I speak with, but I'm one of the, people that was quite happy when I finally had something to call it because I was starting to feel really, um, really frustrated that I just could not be figured out. I, you know, there's no relief in sight. And now I finally had a name for it. And it was an evening that I remember just quite vividly just going to the studio and locking the door. And I had an image on my phone through my, my chart of my MRI. And it was just, it, you know, I've never looked at internal imaging besides um, ultrasounds of my children. And that was a joyous thing. And this was a very frightening thing. You don't want to see things in your brain. Nobody wants to see things in their brain. Um, and I, I felt um, it was not it was not myself that I was looking at. And I hated to feel like almost like a number in that minute, in that moment. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I did is I just tried to start, I just started throwing some color down to try and make it um, something that I could come to terms with. And by the time that I was finished with that first painting, which was a, a red, it was in reds and blacks and golds, um, but it was very, it wasn't an, an angry picture to me. It was a very passionate picture that I felt connected to. Um, and it was, it was a really big turning point for me quite early on. So I, I started out with that mindset pretty quickly, I'd say after my diagnosis. So again, you took a, you took an image of your MRI and you looked at it and interpreted that rather than in the blacks and whites of x-rays and CAT scans and MRI kind of images, you decided to put color to that. 
And then, you know, did you do it again and again, the same image or what did you do? I didn't. It was just something that felt healing to me. And I had just posted it on my social media. Um, and it was shared by the National MS Society, which was an exciting day for me. I was like, oh, it's an account that I follow and I, I, a service that I take advantage of, certainly as someone living with MS. Um, and the comments that were coming in kind of floored me because prior to people seeing that piece of art, I didn't really feel like I had found my people that I could speak to MS about. I just, I had tried a few things, but suddenly there was all these people saying, wow, that's, um, they're seeing what I saw, that it was a joyful moment, that it was something to celebrate um, kind of owning my own diagnosis and in a way that I wanted to see it. And I just was so moved that maybe there were other people that wanted to be a part of this. And so I, I literally started messaging people saying, can I just, can I paint your brain? Which is the weirdest icebreaker that there ever will be, you know. I, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is. And that's what the colors of MS was born, correct? Like you would delete that message immediately if you saw that. Um, but that's where Colors of MS was born, right? Where it was. That's where it was, yes. How many people reached back to you when you sent that message out? You just said, you know, some people deleted it, but some others reached back to you. How many people reached back initially? I think initially I had about 20 people right off the bat go directly from the post that I had, that my art had been shared at to messaging me about it. Um, and so I had 20 people lined up right away to do it. And it started very loosely. I was on vacation at my in-laws <laughs> and I just said, you know what? I want to tell you, tell your story in your words. I put very little structure to it um, because sometimes it feels good to just say your story without people asking you questions and all this thing back and forth, just put it out there. Um, and that I would paint it for them. And that, you know, I think I did my first hundred the first year that I started. So it quickly went from 20 to a hundred. And are they all posted in a location that people can go and look at them all? They are. Uh, the project is on my social media. So my Instagram account, Lindsay Joy Holcomb, and it's also fully on my website and in a book that captures the first 50 participants of the 123 that I've painted so far, only 54 of those are in the project. Um, not everybody wants to share it, share their stories out loud on social media. And I respect that. Gotcha. But people can go up again, tell them the website, they can go up and take a look at all the pictures. Sure. It's um, lindsayjoyholcomb.com and that's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Okay. And, and so again, you've got 50 images up there right now. What's been the response from the MS community? It's um, a lot of people say that it has, it has given them hope. It helps people see their MS from a different perspective. Um, I think people have liked meeting the participants through the project because it's a lot of people that are making some big waves in not only the MS community, but their professional lives, their personal lives, people doing all sorts of things. We have marathoners, we have authors, artists, mothers, fathers, all that, everybody. And I think it's really good to see that because I think there may be a moment when you're diagnosed that all of us go through the, do I need to stop what I'm doing? Do I need to, you know, quit the things that I love. And I think that it shows a lot of people that that's not the case. Right. Now you have uh, something Gary come up here in this coming March. March is MS Awareness Month. What are you planning on doing in March? Yeah, in March, I'm really excited to um, start a, a virtual art project with people that are in the my, my uh, Colors of MS community and hopefully beyond, where I'm sending people a template of an MRI that I did a lino cut of to help guide them through creating their own type of art with an MRI template. And I'm really excited to see what people come up with. Um, it's going to be just kind of a virtual draw in sketch in type of appointment. Um, and what I hope to do with a hundred pieces from that project is to create a large mosaic that's going to hang in the Portland Providence Brain and Spine Institute. 
And yeah. And you're doing that to hopefully inspire others to see some color and some joy in their diagnosis rather than just be futile, right? Yes, and I want it front and center right in the waiting room where I think a lot of people need it. Um, my, my clinic waiting room has a picture of ducks in it. <laughs> And I can't tell you how much I hate these ducks because I think there should be relevant art. <laughs> well, I've seen something. I, I, I'm looking at a couple of your, your uh, paintings right now, and they are really literally beautiful. I, I, you, 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 don't even, you can't even think when you look at them to begin with that that's a brain. Um, but then when you look at it, you recognize, wait a minute, yeah, that is a brain. And I see what's been done to that brain. It's really, really powerful. And you use multi-dimensional art techniques to do that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I switched from working in acrylics and oil to ink when I was diagnosed because ink is a really wild medium that you can't control. It's very meditative in a way to just let it do its own thing. And that was a really good metaphor for how I work in the studio um, to make that change for these particular art pieces. Lindsay, look, I, I, I got to pay some bills here for a minute, so I want you to stick around. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a break, and then we'll come right back, and I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, what you want uh, people to know, and, and really talk a little bit more about how that's really uplifted your life. So you've been watching and, and tuned in to Free Thinking with Montel today, and our guest is Ms. Lindsay Holcomb, who has started a project that's called Colors of MS. And again, Lindsay, you can go where to see it. My website, which is lindsayjoyholcomb.com or on Instagram at lindsayjoyholcomb. And go up and take a peek. They're really, really, really beautiful, beautiful works of art. And uh, it's turning, you know, what is that whole thing? You know, a, a pig's ear into, uh, you know, something beautiful. I mean, literally, you know, looking at an MRI that has brought people so much disdain, turning into looking at something that's, that's uh, beautiful and making people own. So let me take a little break. You've been listening to Free Thinking with Montel. We'll be back right after this. Well, thanks so much for being a part of Free Thinking with Montel today. And our guest is Lindsay Holcomb, who started a project that's called Hashtag Colors of MS. She's a mixed media artist who works with ink, oil, and thread. And she's the founder of, again, this internationally recognized social art project, Colors of MS, where she takes MRIs, of brain scans of MS patients and turns them into absolutely beautiful, incredible works of art, transforming something that's often looked at as bad news, you know, a brain scan uh, showing the presence of MS into something that's truly amazing. And she herself was diagnosed with MS back in 2017 and has been sharing with us how she's been dealing with and coping with it. And, you know, again, Lindsay, thanks so much for being a part of Free Thinking today. Absolutely. And, you know, talk a little bit about your day to day. I mean, you know, how there are so many people out there, especially during, you know, these tough times that we faced in 2020, who, you know, can't seem to, to find that forest through the trees, you know what I mean? Can't seem to find, you know, beauty in the clouds. I mean, how do you get through every single day? Well, this year has been a challenge, <laughs> that is for sure. Um, I, I think, especially helping people through these paintings, um, which is really how I see it, um, really marking a moment in other people's journey is something that enormously helps my day to day because I wake up in the morning saying, I have to make a transformational moment for somebody and I need to be in the right headspace for that. This is, these aren't art pieces that I can do at 10 p.m. when I've had a really stressful day. I can't do that. It doesn't hold the place for the person that I'm painting. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't produce my best work. And so I've really taken this year and my day to day to really shape how I can um, get into the studio with a really clear mind. That's great. That's so good. And again, can people purchase your artwork? They can, yeah. Through my website, they're able to commission either a custom MRI um or purchase prints or a book of the project that's really good now, I, I keep saying it but tell them one more time where they can go to get it yes um my website is www.lindsayjoyholcomb.com and or instagram at lindsayjoyholcomb they can send me a message if they're interested 
Now, we know you have a really big project again coming up in March, but what else do you have planned for 2021? 2021, I am finally, I think, getting through the the pickled stress of this year. I'm, you know, homeschooling my two. Um, we finally, I don't want to say it out loud because I feel like I may jinx it. We're finally in a clip of daily routine with getting four people in the house on conference calls in the morning from the age of six to 40. So, <laughs> um, you know, we're finally there. And so I'm trying to do be a lot better about carving out again, more quiet space to create. Um, I'm trying to focus a lot more on the things that I can change to mitigate my own symptoms this year. And that that's a really big project because I've always been busy. I like to be busy, but I think I need to sit with the quiet a little bit more. And um, well, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there is a lot of really good information out there. I mean, you can, you know, uh, look into some of the information that Dr. Howard Weiner has been putting out. And there are several, you know, books out there right now that talk about how we can impact information. Because again, we know information is probably the biggest nemesis that we have. And you, know, you can do that through your diet and through exercise and, you know, and, and you also said it uh, through, you know, some mindfulness, just sitting and being still and, and finding joy in the simple things. So I, I really, really wish you well. And I got to thank you so much for being a part of Free Thinking. And I think that, you know, I'm hoping that people go up on your website. One more time, give it out again. Yes, it's lindsayjoyholcomb.com or on Instagram at lindsayjoyholcomb. And Lindsay's looking for some recruits to help her in her March quest to make sure she can put out another big book. And I wish you well, Lindsay. And, you know, you always have a home here whenever you want. And I got to say thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in and being a part of Free Thinking with Montel today. Thanks for joining me on Free Thinking with Montel. Please make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to be notified when new episodes post each week. We'd love to hear your feedback, so please send us your comments.